Rays offense continues to click on all cylinders. Last night, the Rays raced out of the gates, and the bullpen put the brakes on a red-hot fence lineup en route to a one-run victory. Today, ace right-hander Chris Archer goes to the hill, looking to continue his sensational season and lead the Rays to a series victory. Tropicana Field, another big crowd gathering as the Rays take on the New York Mets in more interleague baseball. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to an afternoon of Rays baseball with Brian Anderson, Dwayne Stats. Great to have you with us. We've had a great series here. Leads taken, leads lost. They've divided the first two games of this series, and for two teams built on pitching, and coming into this series next to last in their respective leads and runs scored, we've had some pretty good offenses on display. Teams are swinging the bats, and there are a lot of parallels between these two teams and the reason why they're swinging the bats so well. Number one, you're getting production from up and down the lineup, and for the Rays, that's led to five and a half runs a game, 46 extra base hits in their last 11 games. They're hitting 290 as a team, and how about this? 354 with runners in scoring position. So not only are they giving themselves opportunities, but they are cashing in in a big way. This team scoring five and a half runs a game, they're going to win an awful lot. And the same can be said for the offense of the Mets in the last 13 games. 5.8 runs a game. Again, the extra base hit with 54 of them. Runners in scoring position for this offense over the last 13 games, 349. And again, contributions from up and down the lineup. You think about Murphy. You think about Granderson. You think about Duda. You think about the new guy. You went as Cespedes. Both of these teams, a lot of production, one through nine, and they're getting it done in a big way right now. These are going to be the two guys that try to slow them down. In an attempt to thwart these two respective offenses, Chris Archer goes to the mound for the Rays, and he'll be opposed by 42-year-old right-hander Bartolo Colon coming off that eight-inning, seven-inning, or eight-inning, seven-hit, one-run performance his last time out in a win over Miami. It had been a long time since he picked up a victory. And, of course, Chris Archer coming off a win Tuesday over the Chicago White Sox. As Drupal Cabrera has been a big part of the Rays' resurging offense, Don Callis takes a closer look when we return.
youngsters getting a Raymond soap dispenser as the Mets and the Rays get ready to wrap up this three-game series. They see each other once every three years. The winner of today's game will win the season series and have bragging rights until probably 2018. For the Rays, averaging five and a half runs per game over the last 11 coincides nicely with a hitting streak of one Ashdrubal Cabrera. Cabrera has been red hot. The switch hitter from both sides has been getting the job done. 525. He's hitting over 500 for a stretch of 11 games. At one point in the middle of June, his average was down below 200. Now he's up to 256, including six consecutive multi-hit games. The 11-game hitting streak is the longest in over two years for the Rays. Will Myers had a 12-gamer in July of 2013. So Cabrera continues to get the job done for the Rays as we get you ready for baseball on this Sunday afternoon. It'll be Chris Archer against Marcolo Colon, the Rays and the Mets. All the action coming up right here on Sunsport. A lot of action in this series between the Rays and the Mets. And for the Rays, it will be Chris Archer heading to the mound to wrap up this series, making his 24th start here facing the New York Mets lineup. Lineup presented by your Southern Ford dealers. The Mets will have Curtis Granderson leading off. He's the DH, followed by Daniel Murphy in second base, and then the O.N. assessment is hitting third. Lucas Duda is at first base. Juan Uribe at third. Michael Conforto at left at sixth. Wilmer Flores in this game at shortstop. Kelly Johnson hits eighth, playing right field. Kevin Ploiecki is the catcher, and he will bat ninth. Well, for Chris Archer, this 23 starts so far this year. He's given up two earned or fewer in 17 of the 23, including his last time out against the Chicago White Sox up in Chicago. He went seven strong, two earned runs, and picking up that 10th win of the season.
Curtis Granderson set to lead this one off. He started last night's game with a home run. Hitting 259, 19 home runs overall. And the first pitch presented by Pinchapenny. That's in there, a fastball for strike one. So we are underway. But wide, one and one. Trying to test the limits of that straight zone already. Well, it's two balls and a strike. Ray start the day at 55 and 56, a game under 500. Foul ball runs the count to two and two. Archer's made eight career starts in interleague play with a 270 yard run average and a record of two and four. Anderson fouling the slider. Well, and most of the time for Chris Archer, it becomes a matter of run support because he does not give up much. And that's why that last time out, a bit of a surprise going up against Chris Sale, he got 11 runs. And he stretched out Granderson using the slider. So that's how this one starts. Well, Chris Archer giving Kurt, Curtis Granderson a little bit of everything. He saw all three pitches, the fastball, the slider, and the changeup strikes him out on a slider there that stayed up and out over the swing of Curtis Granderson. You typically see that pitch with a whole lot more depth, but when you can miss throw one and still pick up a strikeout, you'll take that too. Here's Daniel Murphy teeing off, heading it deep into right center field. One hop the wall. And a two base hit. So Murphy jumped on the fastball and collects his 22nd double of the year. You know, you would expect this Mets lineup to kind of take the same approach that the Rays did last night off of Syndergaard. And that's if you wait to get to two strikes with Chris Archer, you're playing with fire because he knows how to put you away. One of the best strikeout pitchers in the game of baseball. So if he's going to leave a pitch out over the plate early, you might as well go to swing it. And Murphy did there for a double. So just like that, the Mets have a man in scoring position for Yoannis Cespedes. That hit for Murphy, the fourth of this series. Three have been for extra bases, two doubles and a home run. Hey, Dwayne, you remember, you know, it used to be, you know, the Yankees, the Red Sox, they would try to work a starter, get his pitch count way up, and get into that bullpen early. Well, a lot of teams are going to the bullpen early regardless. So why wait around and try to get a guy's pitch count up? Go out there and start attacking early in the count. Yeah, that's a great thought because the philosophies have changed a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Cespedes fouls it away for years. The Yankees were famous for trying to get that starter to 100 pitches by the fifth inning. Yeah. Made it their goal to do that every game so that you, yeah work counts up well now you see guys going five innings five and a third on 70 pitches and they're coming out of the game so why in the world am I going to wait around and let this guy maybe get the jump on me oh two if he's going to be out over the plate with strikes I, I'm going to start swinging the bat aggressively that's what both of these teams are doing right now yeah I was going to say that's what the Rays have done and certainly with the offense the Mets have put out recently that's what they've done as well and just another example of the counter punches to this game and the approach to it. The game changes. Sometimes it goes through cycles. The approach to games changes. Defense, pitching, hitters. There's a swing and a miss. 
on the fastball up at 96. And, and, and that's why it's it's difficult to let Chris Archer, not that, not that you let him, but when he gets to two strikes, he's got so many ways to either limit contact to poor contact or just flat out put you away. You know, he can elevate the fastball like he did there with great velocity. Of course, he's got the wipeout sliders. Just got too many ways to nullify you with two strikes. Well, here's Lucas Duda. 21 home runs. He had two hits last night, driving in two with a double in the first. And a single his second time up. Fouls the fastball back, strike one. Let's take a quick look at the Rays defense brought to you by BMW. A little different look here today. In the outfield left to right, Jace O'Geyer and Sizemore. And across that infield, third to first, Longoria, Cabrera, Forsyth, and Loney with Rivera behind the plate. Way up and off the mid of Rivera. Murphy trots in at third on a wild pitch. Now trying to go up in the zone and just a little bit too much there for Rivera. You know, we often see Renee able to get out of that stance and flag these down, but this one even a little too tall for him at 96 miles an hour. Now you know you're throwing hard when even your catcher is tardy on you. <laughs> and he knows a fastball's coming. That's right. 1-1 one, one the count to the New York first baseman. That went right by him. And, and did you see Rivera was not in his normal stance? I mean, he's in a half crouch. They want these pitches up because Lucas Duda likes that ball down and out over the plate. That's where we've seen him do his damage. The pitch that's elevated. Look at where Rivera is. He's He wants it up. He gets it up. The swing cannot get there. And he went that time on the slider. Well, you followed that last pitch with a slider. Good luck. He strikes out the side, leaving a man in third, and we're headed into the bottom half of the first with no score. In the wrap-up game of the series against the New York Mets. Take a quick look at the starting lineup brought to you by your Southern Ford dealers, Jason Sizemore and Longoria, with Loney Forsyth and Cabrera down the middle. Schaefer in the lineup hitting seventh in front of Geyer and then Rivera. Bartolo Colon on the hill. First pitch is a strike on the inside part of the plate. That first pitch of fastball in the upper 80s. Uh, and, and here's the thing, Dwayne. 
you're going to see a ton of fastballs today. To kind of put it in perspective, he uses his fastball as often as R.A. Dickey throws his knuckleball. That's really astounding. A fly ball into left, but Fordo back, still backing up, and just before he gets to the track, makes the catch. Now let's take a quick look at that net defense brought to you by BMW. We'll get back to that breakout on Bartolo Colon. It's coming. There it is, baby. In the outfield, left to right, Michael Conforto, Yuanda Cespedes, and Kelly Johnson. And across that infield, third to first, Uribe, Flores, Murphy, and Duda with Kevin Plawecki behind the plate. Grady Sizemore takes the pitch for a ball. Sizemore hitting 243. It's fouled out of play. Pretty amazing when you think about uh, the point that you just brought up. One thing to have a knuckleball pitcher rely on that pitch almost exclusively. Mm -hmm. But when you have a guy who relies on the fastball like that, unheard of. Especially when it's below 90. You know, that, that fastball, you're going to see, we saw the opening at 86, that was at 88. You know, he's in that range up around 90, but he's got very good command. And, you know, he doesn't walk anybody. He's got the second lowest walks per nine innings in Major League Baseball at one. And there's a little broken bat humpback liner caught by Murphy. But those are the two top guys. When you break down starting pitchers in Major League Baseball and the usage of one particular pitch, the highest percentage, it's R.A. Dickey's knuckleball, number one, Bartolo Colon's fastball, number two. Those are your top two, and, and it, it, it is astounding because it's not an overpowering pitch. But he's sneaky with it. He moves it around, and uh, certainly you're right, not going to overpower you with it. Here's Evan Longoria. He takes the pitch wide. I think he gets you thinking so much about the fastball because you know that that's what you're going to see, and you know that that's what you're going to swing at most of the time that he just entices you. He's able to put it on the corners, and it's like anything else. It's like a hitter in a 3-1 count. They want to swing at that fastball, and when they get it, sometimes they'll expand their zone a little bit. And that's the other thing. Put it on the corners. He locates well. He's walked only 14 hitters, five intentional walks, and now just over 128 innings this year. His strikeout to walk ratio coming in, 98-14. to 14. That's 7-1. to one. I mean, seven to one. That, that is elite. It's two and two. He won 15 games last year for the Mets. It was 15 and 13. 10 and 10 this year. And hey, there's a slider. Full count now. Well, there's the breakout we're talking about. And he's at 86.3. R.A. Dickey with the knuckleball at 86.8. Ground ball. Floor is from shortstop. The throws in time, and it's a fly ball, a little liner, and a ground ball out. One, two, three.
Texas. By Morgan Auto Group, make it Morgan, we make it happen. And by Kona Brewing Company, one life, right? Don't blow it. Mahalo. Here's Juan Uribe. Uribe, the third baseman. Pitch is a strike. One. Uribe. At 262 overall. He's had 11 home runs. Gives the Mets a veteran presence with David Wright on the disabled list. Uribe at third base. And as we have seen, particularly in the first game of this series, some pop. With that bat, he had a seventh inning home run here Friday night. Well, he does have some sock, and I tell you, you hang one out over the plate, this is what he's capable of doing. Rebay's been around a long time. He's seen about every style of pitcher out there, and still a productive bat. And he lays off. The slider, the 3 2. Archer wanted the appeal, and Todd Tishner down at first as he held up. So a leadoff walk in the second inning for Uribe. And that's not something that Chris Archer does very often. And that was a, a, a good take, wasn't even close on the swing. I'll tell you what, for the most part, you earn your walks with both of these pitchers. For a, a power pitcher, Chris Archer has very good command. And, of course, Bartolo Colon, one of the best in the game. Michael Conforto and the pitch is a strike. That's the area of Chris Archer's game where he's really improved. I mean, he's just over two walks every nine innings. And has started this game six of six in first pitch strikes. That all goes together. And that was one of the knocks against him. You know, he listen, he's always had a great arm. It was the command through the minor leagues and, and even getting into the big leagues. But boy, he's really honed his craft now where he's got a very good idea where every pitch is going to end up. The fastball by Conforto. The Mets have high hopes for this young man. In fact, they're entertaining the idea that he could be an everyday outfielder for them next year. Young. Uh, he's made the rapid uh, progression up the ladder here for the New York Mets, getting some big league time now. And holds the count of the ball. And two strikes. Porto hit his first big league home run six days ago against the Marlins in Miami. A big hit here in the ninth inning of game one of this series. He's out on strikes. Fastball. 96. Well, the first four outs recorded on strikeouts. And just overpowering here. Well, he stays behind that fastball so well. There's nothing fancy about that. That's belt high right down the middle of the plate. And Conforto tries to shorten up the swing and to no avail. The shortstop, Wilmer Flores. Man out of Venezuela, and the pitch is wide. <laughs> 
two and nothing. Stuff there. 96, 2 and 1. That speaks to the ball jumping out of Chris Archer's hand. He's so quiet mechanically, and his finish at the end is so quick and violent, and the ball just shoots out. You know, Wilmer Flores is looking for a 2 0 heater. He gets one to take a good swing at, just like Conforto, and it's just, it's just by you. These guys haven't seen a whole lot of Chris Archer in the past. This is all new. He misses there. Archer does. He's behind floor is three and one. And this is where Archer can challenge with the fastball. We've seen him in these instances use the slider behind in the count. Another part of his game he's improved upon. Popped up foul. It'll carry back out of play. Count goes to three and two. Kelly Johnson on deck, Rays and the Mets at the top of the second inning. And ball four is up and in. So two walks in this inning. One out. It's not something that you see very often, but with Chris, Ar Chris Archer's stuff, these are the types of situations that he can pitch himself right out of just as quickly as he got into. Well, the last time he's walked more than two in a game was on July the 3rd in New York against the Yankees. He walked one against the White Sox, nobody against Detroit. The outing before that when he struck out 11. One and zero here on Kelly Johnson. There's the strikeout to walk ratio board, and Archer at 5.29 fifth in the American League. One and one. And Chris, right now, 184 strikeouts on the year, with 36 walks. In, in 150 innings. I mean, he, he knows how to put a guy away, and he's got an opportunity to do it right here with Kelly Johnson being down in the count one and two. Johnson lays off. Slider in at 90. Two and two. Well, the Mets running first in the NL East, a game and a half up on Washington. The Rays running fourth in the AL East, seven behind the Yankees. And the screen foul. <laughs> I mean, look out, Ploiecki. Kelly Johnson way late on that heater just trying to stay alive. So is Ploiecki. <laughs> yeah, he's out of the on deck circle. Now even more. Toward the. Uh, center of the backstop. Johnson. Out on strikes that one at 98. And I think that Chris Archer recognized how late he was on the previous fastball that was away. So he brings this one more middle to middle in at 98, and it's not even not even close. He blows it right by him. Five outs, five strikeouts. Here's Kevin Ploiecki, the New York catcher.
Fastball a little bit high. Says Tom Woodring. Woodring, just 32 years old, made his major league debut in April of 2014. So a young umpire. Now one and one. Woodring. Boulder, Colorado. And he could not get Pawlucki to go after that. Pretty close pitch in and of itself. A couple of those in this sequence were pretty close. Count now stands at two and one. Three balls and a strike. Yeah, he, he's not budging on those borderline type pitches. That fastball very close. Well, you can see right there, four pitches, two were in the zone, but the count is now three and one. So that's a very tight zone back there so far. And there is ball four. The bases are loaded on three walks. And you can see Kevin Cash asking Woodring, where are those pitches? Well, you, you know, you just don't see this often. You, you already talked about the fact that uh, the last time that Chris Archer walked more than two in a game, he's done it here in one inning. Yeah, it's a very tight zone. You have to be careful. If you're the manager asking about that. So the bases are loaded with two outs. And here's Curtis Granderson. Did he go on the slider? He did not. Sliders missing and the count is two and zero. Oh. You got to believe that Chris Archer is going to come with the fastball here. We've seen Granderson ambush in these types of situations. He's going to be looking to swing the bat here, so make sure you put it in a good spot or you really hump up with some extra velocity. And that's ball three in at 95. And he was trying to go away. Well, he just yanked that fastball. Three on pitch. And a strike. Three and one. is inside and Hickey's going to head to the mound. You, you wonder if the tight zone Chris Archer starting to think a little bit too much about it. The last three fastballs after he fell behind three and oh the last three or sorry two and oh were yanked inside. He yanked one in to go three and oh he yanked another one in got the call and then yanked a third. All three fastballs were meant to be middle away. And completely yanked across the plate. Now the Rays taking their time in this huddle, and finally Tom Woodring heads to the mound. Wait to see if Jim Hickey was going to have anything to say to him. I know. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. It's always a little dangerous when you're out there that long. Yeah. And, it, and at least you stay out there long enough to make the umpire make that trip. 
So there's a little psychological warfare going on too right there by taking all of that time. Here's Daniel Murphy. And the pitch is a strike slider to him. Murphy doubled in the first. One and one. Well, there's no give back there. Uh, none. Well, Zero. And, and you know, we're last night with Tim Welke behind the play, that zone was wide. It was I all mean, over it, the it, it, and it was. It was inconsistent and it was very wide. This is consistently tiny. That's a strike. One and two. Archer with the entire month of May walking five. He's walked four in this inning. That shows you how tight the zone is. He went a whole month and walked only five men. It's been a matter of minutes here and he's walked four. That's a tight zone. Inside. 98. Something extra on that one. Uh, Daniel Murphy, you're not expecting that. He saw three straight breaking balls and then 98 up under the armpits and was talking to himself coming out of the batter's box. Bases full of New York Met base runners. 2 2 the count to Murphy. The count is full. Well, he, you know what? His last five or six fastballs, he has not been very close with many of them. I mean, he, he continually yanks that fastball now. It's five in a row that he's yanked to the inner part of the plate, and only one of them, which has been a strike. Let's see what he goes with here. You got to think that slider. 3 2. And it's fouled into the dugout. Look out, fellas. And he did go with the slider. Well, you just wonder where his confidence level right now is on the fastball. He, he, he's standing out there. He's the one throwing it and realizing that he hasn't executed one in a couple of hitters. Again on the 3 2. And a base hit on the right. Flores scores. Ploiecki's going to score. Over to third goes Granderson. And Murphy drives in two on the 3 2 slider. I, I think Daniel Murphy, smart right there, realizing he's struggling with the fastball. Didn't get off the slider and he follows. Look at how him follow that right down and put a nice swing on it. Wasn't fooled at all. He had seen a number of them in the at bat. He finds a hole on the right side. And the Mets take advantage of all these walks. Now well, four walks and a base hit in the inning. It's a three run inning. First and third now, and here's Cespedes. There's the 31st pitch of the inning. And that's the other thing that you have to think about. A lot of pitches in a short period of time. Well, I, I, what I'm thinking about is the fastball command. Yep. It, it's been all over the play. The last six have been thrown to the same spot. There you go. Cut and a miss by Cespedes on the 95 mile per hour fastball. Well, he finally got it back into the spot that he wanted it. And that's going to be important going forward. Very important. Swing and a miss again on the fastball. 96 on that one.
It's popped to the right side. Loney in foul territory. Retires Cespedes. The Mets score three runs on one hit. Three nothing. B. Water Smart from the Start program. Matthew recently graduated from the Water Safety program, supported by the Rays and local YMCAs. He and his family all know the importance of water safety and have all received water safety training through their local Y. We raise up for health. How do you raise up? Kevin Kiermeyer. Out of the lineup after injuring his thumb last night and staying in to finish that game. Had trouble gripping the bat today. James Loney fouls the first pitch here in the bottom of the second inning. So it'll be Loney, Forsyth, and Cabrera. And I don't think that anybody's really surprised by that. You know, you got the quick turnaround day game after a night game, and we saw him in the middle of the game icing that thumb down on the bench trying to stay in there. Lifted into left, Conforto makes the catch. Well, here's a look at that injury going into second base last night. And, and, and slow motion doesn't do it justice. When you're talking about how fast Kevin Kiermeyer is moving and he's making that slide and that thumb jams into the dirt as he hits the bag, you can see how much pain he was in. Well, initially you're concerned about a break, a fracture, a ligament issue. Mm -hmm. And it appears it was none of those, but plenty sore. And the fact that he stayed in was pretty amazing. And still, you know, he's that's going to be something that he's going to have to deal with, try to get that swelling out of there, benefit the Rays. They've got, you know, after today, two of the next four are off days. So he's going to get an opportunity to rest it, get the swelling out, and then it'll be pain tolerance if there's no structural damage. 1 1 count to Logan Forsythe. Pops it into right, and Johnson is there. Two gone. Five in a row retired by Cologne. Here's as Drupal Cabrera, who's been red hot. Cabrera in last night's game was on three times, two hits, a walk, a stolen base, and a run scored. And the first pitch is a strike.
one attempt is fouled. You know, when you can go back over two weeks and be sitting in August and raise your batting average over 30 points, that tells you just how hot he is. And it's from both sides of the plate. You know, he's got a streak of six straight multi hit games. So they've not come cheaply. A two strike count. I'd be ready for that fastball in right here. He has slowly walked his Drupal Cabrera right off the plate away. This is the perfect time to shoot one in. I'm going to go back out away. And a ground ball Ooh. down to first. Sharply hit. Dudak comes up with it. And the Rays are up and down. One, two, three. We're headed into the third. Three nothing New York. And photo use hashtag SS data strong fan and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. Lucas Duda will open the third inning. He made the final out of the first and the Mets sent eight men to the plate got one hit and scored three runs in the second. This pitch is a strike to Duda. Fastball way up there. Started him with the off speed for a strike. For the most part, he's been better with the off speed as far as throwing strikes. Fastball's been a little erratic. Two and one. To the left side. Foul ball that's going to carry out of play. And the Rays with the shift on and Longoria over toward the shortstop side. No play anyway. Yeah, and it's never a good sign when the pitching coach is hanging out with the manager as his pitcher's out on the mound and in conversation. This right here, they're talking about the issues. That Chris Archer is having here this afternoon. And not getting a whole lot of help behind the plate either. I mean, close. And there's a strike call. Slider. Strikeout number six. He got Duda on the slider swinging in the first, looking here in the third. 
Right at the top of the strike zone and important for Chris Archer to stay focused and to keep this Met lead at three. We saw how quickly the Rays were able to erase a three-run lead in last night's game. And you've got to figure against Bartolo Colon, they're going to get their chances. They know what they're going to see. And this offense has been swinging the bat better lately. Fastball and Uribe takes that one high. Did not chase. There's a foul ball right back off the mask. And that was a slider. One and one. And, and he got away with that one. Is that stayed middle in? You know, Juan Uribe doesn't have the same bat speed as he once did. So he's got to get it started a little earlier. That front hip starts to leak. And when you, you leave a slider out over the plate, those are the pitches that he hammers. Lifts this one high and foul. Well foul. Now a one two count. Pop to the right side. Will it be playable? Loney to the dugout, and it's just on top of the dugout, out of reach. Count holding at one and two on the New York third baseman. Blue Jays and the Yankees are in New York in the top of the fourth. Josh Donaldson has hit a home run in that game. He now has 31 home runs, and it's one nothing Toronto. Estrada and Tanaka, the match up there. John Gibbons said going into that series, this is the most important Blue Jay series in New York in the last 20 years. And boy, have they played like it. Fastball, strikeout of Uribe. So that's seven strikeouts for Archer. Or a lot of them coming on the elevated fastball. And while you won't get a guy typically to chase that pitch early in the count with two strikes. Well, you will. Well, back to that Toronto, New York series. Blue Jays two and a half behind to start the day. There's a strike to Conforto. And four games in the loss column. So that's why this series is so important for the Blue Jays. And, and you know, two for two so far. And a, and a great game yesterday you know that that was a close ball game David Price pitched for Toronto he ends up going seven shutout but Justin Smoke goes grand slam in that him? game he's, he's hit some home runs now for the Blue Jays hitting's contagious very contagious one and two I, I think the point to be made there you put another hitter or two in your lineup, it makes the whole lineup better. And it's contagious because there's a lot more pressure on the opposing pitcher. And you might see some better pitches. Right there, Conforto missed the slider, and Archer strikes out the side for the second time. Nine outs recorded, eight on strikeouts. It's 3 0 New York.
for their first base runner, and Richie Schaefer is going to lead it off here. He's the DH. Schaefer in the Chicago series getting his first big league hit. Turned out to be a home run. One and oh, the count. Schaefer, Geyer, and then Rivera. Two and zero. Oh. Schaefer's home run. He went back to back with a Drupal Cabrera in the Tuesday game in Chicago against the White Sox. Two and one down. That was that uh, delayed greeting he got from his teammates upon circling the bases in the aftermath of his first big league hit, being a home run. His celebration by himself and with his fake teammates was priceless absolute classic that never gets old and you see a lot of the guys with the fake high fives but he got in a point he there were, he exchanged some some verbiage with one of the guys he hugged some other fake dude three two now to Schaefer ground ball and that's going to go through the right side he picks up the first hit for the Rays. So Schaefer's aboard. He took a close pitch for a ball and then singled the other way. Well, and that's what this Rays lineup has to, you know, realize too. Listen, they're going to be tight. If Woodring is going to be tight on Archer, you better believe he's going to have the same strike zone for Bartolo Colon. So now you have to figure a, a young umpire. Is going to be as close to textbook as he can be. So there may be a tendency to be a little tight with the zone. And you could argue there was a pitch or two there that could have been a strike that he called the ball, but the other side of that, Archer didn't help himself either with lack of command. It started with that leadoff walk to Juan Uribe. You're right. And and certainly, you know, maybe a couple of pitches missed, but Every borderline pitch did not go Chris's way. And so, you know, you, you're right. A young umpire is going to be as close to the to the book definition of a, you know, of a strike as he possibly can be. So you'd expect that for sure. Geyer lifts it into the left. And Porto comes in and makes the catch. It's the first out here in the inning. Let's check in with Todd Callis. Dwayne, Rene Rivera was probably going to get the start either way today because it was a day game after a night game. But Kirk Casale really got dinged last night, passed the concussion test after the game. But it was a follow through on a swing by the opposing catcher, Travis Darno, who actually sent him a text after the game and apologized. And Sally said, hey, just part of the game, no hard feelings. But Kurt wanted to work out today, see how he was feeling. But that definitely... Uh, knocked him a little bit last night and he said there's a delicate balance he's been hit in the front of the mask and sometimes behind the mask that one got him on the top by the forehead area he said it's a delicate balance trying to get in there close enough to get your pitchers pitches and then not get hit by those swings and even on a swing the other night Friday night Michael Conforto base hit the left field to tie the game because Sally would have been called for catcher's interference but the play stayed since the Mets scored a run guys well, here's Rivera, and the runner takes off. Pitch skied to deep right field. Johnson back to the wall, and it's going to be off his glove. Schaefer heads to third, and into second base, Rivera. Johnson had trouble tracking that ball, and you can see in his pursuit, he was having an issue. You know, Kelly Johnson's played in this building as a race, so he understands the roof, but that was a complete misplay by the Mets right fielder. This should have been a fly ball deep to right field. But he goes back, gets spun around a couple of times, and that, that ball lands on the warning track. Absolutely should have been caught. The Rays benefit from Kelly Johnson in a misplay. So we'll see if they can take advantage of that here in the third now with minutes second and third in the top of the order, John Jaso. He looks at a strike. Cologne humping up a little bit at 91 on that one. Well, I'm probably not real happy. He's thinking, I got a fly ball from Rene Rivera, two outs, a runner on first, and now he's in big trouble. High shot back into center. Cespedes will go back to the track and make the catch. 
Tag at third. Schaefer scores. Rivera advances to third. The Rays are on the board. Jake Hill gave it a ride. Picks up the RBI. Well, you, you, you plate one run. Maybe uh, should have been inning over, but the Rays will take it. They still got a runner out there at third base. You sit on the fastball. You know you're going to see one. This one's elevated. Jaso, well, he gets it pretty good, but straight away center field. There's a lot of room out there, and Cespedes is able to track it down. Well, you're going to score anyway, so you get back there, let it go in. Glide home. Grady Sizemore cut the miss. There's a strike. Four two to Sizemore. You know, when Kelly Johnson was here, he played. A number of spots on the infield and the some in left, but the not in right field. He's out there in right field for the Mets in this game. All toward the line and left. Conforto after it, and he makes the catch just as he crossed the foul line. To retire the Rays who settle for a run on two hits and leave a man at third. We've gone through three here at the drop, and it's three to one, New York. With MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball at bat up to the moment, at any moment, with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Wilmer Flores leads off the fourth, pitches a strike. Flores part of that three run second inning. Was one of four walks given up in the frame by Archer. Sliders a strike, and the count's 0 2. Slider again off the plate. Well, Chris has already pitched him out of both stirrups. <laughs> you create enough torque. Driving towards home plate, those stirrups pop right up out of the back of those shoes. 
Up the right field line. That's going to be foul. That group down there coming up with that souvenir and they're very generous with that souvenir, passing it along. I don't know who wound up. Oh, the youngster got it. There you go. Gotta be a family, family deal. Yeah. If that's water and not blood, right. That ball doesn't get passed along. Yeah. I I'll let you look at it while I hold it. <laughs> and uh, maybe someday, kid. Yeah. Foul ball, one and two. <laughs> it's not very nice on a kid's Sunday, you know? Yeah. But it's reality. Oh, up the middle and a base hit. Shot right past Archer. Floor is on for the second time. You know, Wilmer Flores is having a nice year for this Mets team offensively. Comes, in, comes into this game third on the team in home runs, second in runs batted in. And we've seen him on a number of occasions in this series with two strikes shorten up on his swing. He made a nice adjustment there and he used the middle of the field and it earned him a base hit. So for the second time in four innings, the Mets put the leadoff man aboard. And here's Kelly Johnson playing right field today. And a line drive caught by Cabrera. Boy, he continues to hit some line drives, and the Rays continue to catch him. I mean, that's got to be now at least four or five that he has hit right on the nose. Couple to shortstop, one out to left field. And this was another one. Perfectly positioned. There's a bullet. There's Cabrera. That's the high def highlight presented by H.H. H. Gregg. Sometimes the best kind of defense is to be in the right spot at the right time. Now there's a strike to Lewicki, the catcher. Well, the Rays are one of the most proactive teams at moving their fielders around, infielders and outfielders, for that very reason. Well, they've got it down with Kelly Johnson, that's for sure. Oh. <laughs> well, listen, he played here. And yeah, the inside information yeah. is a there large sample size. Yep. Speaking of playing here, and we mentioned that he hadn't played right field. And in fact, this start today in right field is only his second time he's been out there uh, with the Mets. It's coming to New York from Atlanta. Well, you could see that he definitely, you know, the ball off the bat of Rivera, and it already looked shady. You know, his initial route in going back, he got himself turned around. And, you know, but anytime you let a fly ball basically land right over your head on the warning track, you, you've misplayed it. And it started right from contact. Just got a roadmap next time. Chop towards short. Cabrera to his right. Out at second. They get the force there. And a nice play. Cabrera and Forsythe. Flores the second out. Well, how good has that combination been this season for the race? Well, better than anyone ever expected, including the Rays brass. This has turned out to be an outstanding combo. And you'll recall all of the talk in the spring about, well, is Cabrera going to play second? And what's going to happen with Forsyth? Maybe a platoon? Well, they played almost every day, and they've been excellent. Solid, solid middle of the diamond defense. Curtis Actually, Anderson, the pitch is down. You know what? Better than solid. They, yep. They've been tremendous. You know, Cabrera took ownership of that shortstop's job early in spring training. And then Forsyth, you know, gets to be the everyday basically second baseman once Nick Franklin went down with the oblique at the end of spring training. And uh, I'll tell you, both of these guys have been, have given the Rays everything they could have hoped for and, and maybe even more. 
There's a close pitch that goes for a ball. Fastball and it's 2 and 0. Oh. There's a strike and now it's 2 and 1. Well, you know, Kevin Cash and even uh, Matt Silverman made the case for Cabrera with the job he's done at shortstop saying that they think he's been as good as any shortstop in the American League. I don't see any deficiencies. Yeah, I, me neither. You know, you, you, you wondered about you know, when he got moved to second base last year with the Nationals, you start to think, okay, he's lost some range. That has not shown up. I mean, I, 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 I don't know what the metrics say, but the, the eye test, it doesn't look like anything jumps out at you that he just can't get to balls. I mean, he's been placed very well, but boy, does he make all the plays. Cut the miss. Granderson missed the slider to retire the side. Nine strikeouts for Archer. Mets leave a runner, and we go to the bottom of the fourth. It's 3-1 to one, New York. The guy called great moment in history on this date in 2011. Right hander James Shields throws a complete game shutout, striking out eight against the Kansas City Royals. Rays winning that game four to nothing. The eighth complete game of the season for James Shields. He finished that year with 11 complete games. Evan Longoria leads off. Slider is outside from Bartolo Colon. Evan, then James Loney and Logan Forsythe. 90 pitches for Archer. There's a base hit into center field. Longoria's aboard. So Evan continues his hitting streak. Put it at nine. Leadoff hitter on for the second straight inning for the Rays. Well, middle of the plate, and that ball was screaming. Stroke me. Evan Longoria obliged right back up the middle in this Rays offense, right back to work. Here's Loney. Pitch strike. (laughs) 
One and one to count on James Loney. Boy, dangerous to leave that left side of the infield open with James Loney up there, a guy known for using the whole field and a pitcher on the mound that you got to believe is going to be continuing to work him away. And his bats showing some life recently. Popper short left, Conforto in there though, and he makes the catch for the out. Second time he's gone out to the left fielder. Second baseman, Logan Forsythe. Logan Forsythe. Logan out to right field his first time. Strike one. Seen a couple sliders in this inning from Cologne. Center field. Cespit is, is there. Two away. The shortstop is Drupal Cabrera. Is Drupal Cabrera due up now? He grounded out his first time. An 11 game hitting streak for Cabrera. Be a foul ball. It would have been interesting had it been fair. <laughs> yes, it would have. As Drupal Cabrera, boy, swinging the bat well, has had very good plans on what he wants to do from at bat to at bat, has been making good adjustments. And he's not been afraid to take that ball away and go ahead and shoot that into left field. Pitch came back a little bit, but down out of the zone. It's one and one. Popped in the center. Cespedes is there waiting. Ray's got the leadoff base hit, but leave Longoria on first. Fifth inning right around the corner with the score three to one New York.
Sunday tells the kids what his message is when he visits the RBI programs around the country. Believe in yourself, follow your dreams, uh, stand out, don't fit in. Um, and most importantly, beyond baseball, try to make good grades, make smart choices. Uh, because the reality of it is very small percentage of us can play Major League Baseball, but we're all going to be successful at something. Archer has visited RBI programs in Cleveland, Philadelphia, and here in the Tampa Bay area as well this year, guys. He said when he was a kid, he used to love reading. He was called a nerd. He said he didn't care. He stuck with it. And he, that's his advice to others. Don't be afraid to stand up. Great message right there all across the board. And that's something that Archer has zeroed in on not only excellence on the field but to make a difference off the field as well. That one a shot well foul off the bat of Daniel Murphy. Murphy's two for two and he got a big base hit in the second inning when Archer was struggling with the command primarily of the fastball. That base hit by Murphy was the only hit of the inning in which the Mets scored three runs. And he was smart to kind of zone in on that slider because he was having trouble commanding it. It was a full count. And that's what he got out into right field. Chopped toward the middle, backhanded by Forsyth. Oh, he got it! Forsyth, the great play. Getting to it one thing, unloading it at another thing. And doing it with accuracy and time to get Murphy. Great play all the way around. Moving to your right, going that hard up the middle. First of all, you got to flag it down, but then you've got a long throw. And boy, he puts a ton into it to get it there on the fly. Logan Forsyth, we already talked about the middle of the infield defense for the Rays, and that's a big part of it right there. He has been absolutely fantastic and acknowledged right there by Chris Archer who knows a good play when he sees one. Wow is exactly right. And the first pitch strike to Cespedes. Boy, well, it's so important to keep a leadoff guy off the bases to begin an inning and that's exactly what Forsyth did there. Well, and especially look who's up. You got Cespedes and Duda. You want to see those guys with those bases empty for sure. One and two now. Archer up to 97 pitches here in the fifth inning. Cologne's made 47 through four, so Archer's made a little more than twice as many pitches as Cologne seems to be throwing about twice as hard as well. And it's a three to one game in favor of New York right now. That 44 pitch second inning. I mean that that is well that was the inning that he walked four hitters. But what a heavy workload. He's recovered well. He you know, he's not lost anything here. Almost 100 pitches in. Up the middle, there's a base hit. Cespedes singles off a slider for his first hit. Rays are going to get that bullpen up and going. Well, with Duda coming up, a runner at first and one out. There is Alex Colome just tossing his first pitch down there, lo loosening up right now. Strikes. 100 pitches right now. It's in there, one and one. Jays get another run. That game's at the end of five in New York, and Toronto has a two-nothing lead. 
Jose Bautista has hit a home run. They're slugging their way through the schedule now. I think this is what everybody envisioned when you added Toy, Troy Tulowitzki. You know, Bautista, Donaldson, and Carnacion, they were already doing their thing. Then you add Tulowitzki out there, another slugger. We had David Price to the rotation. I think his ERA is, I don't know, a half a run in his two starts, something like that. It's ridiculous. And they're playing with that confidence and swag. Down to first. Out at second. Back to first. Started by Loney, ended by Loney with Longoria in the middle on the double play. And we're headed into the bottom of the fifth with the Mets leading the Rays three to one. Nicely done on the double play right here to end the top half of the frame. Geico. 15 minutes can save you 15% on car insurance. Checkers. Mix and match our famous Big Buford and Big Chicken Deluxe. And by Ford. Introducing the all new Ford F-150. The future of tough. Richie Schaefer, the DH. And a liner going to get past your in to left. So Schaefer is aboard with his second hit. He opened the third with a base hit and scored. Sounded as if he broke his bat got that line drive just to the left of your with his second hit. Well, you'll take it any way that you can get it. You're right Dwayne. There was a definite crack in that bat as it gets in right off the label. But he got enough of it and the Rays with another base runner to lead off an inning. And this is where you got to start cashing him in. Brandon Geyer shortens and takes the pitch for a ball. Two and zero. Oh. Tolo Colon, forty-two years old, coming off an eight-inning stint of one run, seven in baseball in Miami in his last outing. It's a check swing and a foul ball back. He had lost his previous six with an earned run mark of seven. Point five five in that stretch. Brown 
ball. That's going to go through into left. Stopping at second is Schaefer. Geyer has his first hit. Well, that's exactly what Bartolo Colon was looking to get right there. But the defensive setup, Uribe once again not able to get to it. Flores was nowhere close to it. So you're trying to get the ball pounded into the ground, keeping it down. You get it, and it sneaks through. And now if you're the Rays, no excuses now. First and second, nobody out, down by two. Right here, they're thinking about Rivera putting a bunt down. Or are they going to let him swing away? Hit the long fly ball to right his last time up. That turned out to be a double when it got away from Johnson out there in right field. Uribe up a bit at third, and he shows bunt, takes the pitch for a strike. Well, this is one of those instances where the Rays fundamentally on offense, you know, need to get this job done. These are the big plays in a game that have the potential to lead to runs that they've struggled with in the past. And the bunt. That's down the third base side. Uribe is going to have to go to third. He got it by. Cologne and Uribe makes the play and the Rays sacrifice the runners over. Well, that was well done. You did get it done. Rivera, that's what you want to do. First and second, you want to go ahead and bunt that ball to the third baseline and force the third baseman to field it, which is what he does once he gets up by Cologne. And you got to take the out to Murphy over at first. So now the Rays have two men in scoring position and John Jaso. Who drove in the run for the Rays with a fly ball to center in the third? So Jaso's up here now. He takes a strike. Well, the Mets conceding this run on a, a ground ball to the right side. They've got the shift on. You can see Daniel Murphy deep out there. Right here. It's one and one. The left side, that's foul. Down into the bullpen. Well, you've got to be able to cover everything here if you're Jason. You're not going to get blown away with velocity. They're in a defense that's conceding the run. You want to make sure you put the ball in play. And if I'm Bartolo Cologne, I may try another one of those fastballs on the inside corner, that front door sinker. Started right at the hip of Jaso and try to take it to the inside corner. They're going to stay away. Jaso shoots it toward left center field. That's going to be in there for extra bases. Schaefer scores. Geyer scores to tie it. It's a two base hit. Jaso has driven in all three runs today. And I think that goes right down to pitch, pitch selection. That was too easy. You know, he just took a backdoor slider and lined it up the left field line. You go right back out there where his sights are set, and it's a fastball that's elevated. That's just too easy. You got to pop another fastball in there, I think. Yeah, maybe you catch him looking, but instead, Jaso takes full advantage. Well, you knew it was just going to be a matter of time. The Rays were going to get their opportunities, and they've tied it up already here in the fifth. Now Jaso's in scoring position for Grady Sizemore. Lifted towards center. Cespedes is there to make the catch on this one. And his throw to third up the line. Jaso had tagged and bluffed to start. 
Well, two outs now with the go ahead run still in scoring position. Evan Longoria heads to the plate. GMC big matchup through the years. Evan 5 of 13 against Bartolo Colon. Which is a strike. Evan single to open the fourth inning, extend his hitting streak out to nine. Jaso out there at second base, driving in all three runs today. It was Jaso who, after the game last night, talking about this offensive front that the Rays have mounted in recent days, being more aggressive and not taking that first pitch and not giving away that strike to opposing pitchers. You didn't see much of a percentage in that. The results speak for themselves since the Rays have taken this more aggressive approach and gone out there and played baseball They've been swinging the bats great Scoring a ton of runs. That's why even today, you know, I, I mean a month ago raised down three to nothing early and you're like well You know this isn't gonna happen. You didn't get the same feeling that you have now No, you, th you think three nothing. It's a minor inconvenience at what inning do they finally catch up? You know Archer's gonna settle down and they're going to get chances off of Cologne. So at what point do they get it? Well, it's the fifth inning, and they finally have and looking to take the lead here. It's a completely different mindset and approach by this team, and it's paying off big. Two, two pop to the right side. That will be a foul ball as Duda makes the catch. Rays are out in the fifth, but they've tied the game. Schaefer and Geyer driven home on the double by John Jaso. We're tied 3 3 through 5. Is loaded walk to Curtis Granderson, followed by a base hit on a 3 2 slider to Daniel Murphy, gave New York a 3 0 lead. Rays got on the board in the third inning with John Jaso sacrificed fly, scored Richie Schaefer. Schaefer opened the fifth with a base hit, later scored 
along with Brandon Geyer on a double by John J. Sell to tie the game at three. Now we go to the six. Chris Archer faces Juan Uribe, who fouls that first pitch out of play on a fastball to start the inning. Uribe 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout. Plays off the pitch high. It's 1 and 1. Powell again back and out of play. Ray started the day four back in the wild card race and seven back in the East. 51 games left to play counting this one. Two and two on your rebate. Uribe began the season with the Dodgers, went to Atlanta at the end of May, and then acquired by the Mets at the end of July. Shot to center field. That's Geyer. One away. As promised earlier in the game, we've selected the data strong fan photo of the game. Tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag SS Data Strong Fan for a chance to be featured in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T Mobile. Michael Conforto, 0 for 2, a couple of strikeouts and a cut and a miss on the fastball. Stairs. Archer at 111 pitches. Brandon Gomes, the right hander. Xavier Cedeno, the left hander, throwing in the Rays bullpen. Fly ball. Geyer waiting for this one. He's taken both. Uribe and now Conforto hitting fly balls to Geyer in center. Well, you got to love what the Chris Archer is doing here this afternoon. You know, had that rough second inning, high pitch count, four walks, three runs. But boy, has he settled in nicely. He's given his offense an opportunity to come back in this game. They've done just that and tied it up. And now two outs here in the sixth. Well, 112 pitches. This is what the good ones, the really good ones do. Struggle early, figure it out, get back in line, keep your team in the game, give them a chance to win. It's a first pitch strike to Flores. Especially with the four walks. You know, a, a lesser pitcher, four walks in an inning, three runs, he probably doesn't get out of that inning. And if he does, probably not going to be in there much longer. But Archer, he, he looks like this is game looks like he's been, you know, Taking a shut up here into the six, the way he's throwing now. And hasn't lost a thing 114 pitches in. He had eight strikeouts through three, nine in the game. 0 2 to Flores upstairs. I mean, 115th pitch is 97. <laughs> I mean, come on. After the 18th out. But he got it. Slider. And boy, what a great pitch that was for strikeout number 10. 
One, two, three, go the Mets in the sixth. This game is tied 3-3. Three, three. Finishing off the sixth in dramatic fashion. Look at that slider. Yeah, and you don't think he wants this? Watch this reaction from Chris Archer when he punches him out. Obviously, Wilmer Flores right there. So we start the bottom of the inning with James Loney. A ball, no strikes. Loney Forsyth and Cabrera do up against Cologne. Lifted toward right center, and this time on the run, Kelly Johnson grabs it. Loney making a bid for an extra base hit, and Johnson made that grab. Well, this is what we were going to talk about. Watch Archer. Like I said, you think he wants this. He gets the punch out, little emotion, and then immediately finds Wilmer Flores and a little bit more and then there's no question little <laughs> giving it to him just a little bit right there that was Chris Archer vintage 2013 just a little flashback a little <laughs> flashback you know, it was a Friday <laughs> that would fit but he's giving a little flashback kid Sunday I like it well listen this has not been an easy outing just go back to that second inning the workload the walks the runs and he has recovered beautifully a 1 1 count on Logan Forsythe one he's got to Cologne for a run in the Third, two more in the fifth. John Jaso has all three runs batted in. There's a big hit up the middle for Logan Forsythe. The Rays have six hits. Number 13, Cabrera. Find the middle of the field, keep the pressure on. The one thing about Cologne, if you're going to get base runners, you're going to have to hit your way on because he doesn't walk many. And the Rays, with six hits, have three runs now. Now, seven hits in the game. And here's Esdrubal Cabrera. And, and we've seen the shift on Esdrubal Cabrera. His first couple of at bats, not so much right here. Wilmer Flores shading up the middle, but he's not pulled around like he had been in the past. He's right here.
Ground ball right side Murphy. Floor is one and back to first. They get the double play. Four six three. We're headed into the seventh inning in a tie game. To the day after six with ten strikeouts. Well, listen, he had that one second inning. We've talked about it with four walks and the three runs given up. But outside of that pickup, he was absolutely tremendous. Did punch out the ten hitters. The fastball got back in the zone. He was explosive with that. The slider once again very good. I don't know if we saw a change up tight. If we did, it wasn't many, and that's how he would end up his day very emphatically with that punch out and what did that come on pitch number what 117 118 116 116 there you go I, I, amazing and and he really didn't lose it does that look like the guy who had just gone six innings 116 pitches still looks fresh and and overall a great job by Chris Archer considering that second inning seventh time he's gone to double figures and strikeouts coming off the 11 strikeouts he had two starts ago against the Tigers now 10 against New York and Xavier Cedeno takes over Juan Lagares will be the pinch hitter to open the seventh inning Lagares will hit for Kelly Johnson. This pitch is a strike. Cut to the fastball from Sedeno. This would bounce foul, another one cutting in on Lagares. That's been a big pitch for Sedeno and his success to both lefties and righties. A breaking ball, a good sweeper, but to the righties, continues to work that cutter in. And then the breaking ball. And there is strike three call. Woodring thought about it, called it a strike. Well, he missed his spot, and that's where Woodring, you get caught up, you know, because it's outside of the body of the catcher. He has to reach for it, but it is right there in the corner. Woodring looks and then rings. One gone, and here is Kevin Plowecki, the catcher. Fly ball right field, and Sizemore handles this one. Two up, two down. So with two outs and the bases empty in the seventh inning, we'll swing around to the top of the lineup and swing around to 
Rich Hollenberg as well. Rich? Thanks, Dwayne. Just to pay off Chris Archer's performance, 10 strikeouts today. If only temporarily, he is now in the lead in the American League in that department with 190. Last week when he faced Chris Sale, he said he usually likes pitching the day after Sale does so he knows how many strikeouts he needs to retake the lead. Well, he's going to have to wait because Sale's pitching tomorrow. And in related news, you see Corey Kluber from the Indians is number three on that AL strikeout list. He is in the midst of a no-hitter through six innings against the Twins, and he has seven strikeouts on the day, guys. So back and forth we go, but right now Archer's topping that list. By four over Sale and seven on Kluber. You got to set that rotation so that uh, you, know, you, you finish in the right spot because that those three have been exchanging the lead for months now. It's a strike from Sedano to Granderson. One and one. Two. The strikeout high for Archer this year, the 15 he had against the Angels. He has struck out 12 in an outing against Seattle. Three outings with 11. A tap. It's by Sedano. To play! Out at first! Forsyth does it again. Forsyth with a great pickup and a quick throw. And the split over there by Loney on the stretch. We'll and see. We'll see what the Mets yeah. decide to do on this. It was a close play at first. I think, he, I think Terry Collins wants him to take a look at it. You might as well. You're getting you know, that point where you can ask if this one doesn't go their way. But what a heck of an effort by Forsyth. Ball into the glove. Uh, he's going to probably be safe. That was close, but it looked like Granderson got the foot to the bag right there before the ball is in the back of the glove. But you never know. Well, what a great effort by Forsyth, who made the great play on Murphy back in the fifth inning. I mean, that close either way. My goodness. The play under review right now. And Granderson will get a base hit. So it's overturned. And a base hit now for Granderson. Well, between Forsyth and Aloni, they did everything possible to make that play. So it's Daniel Murphy now against Sedano. Murphy went two for three against Archer. And a little one hopper to second. Forsyth. To Cabrera to retire the side. Seventh inning stretch time here at the drop. Game tied at three. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please rise.
districts, whether it's a business meeting, luncheon, or a tailgate party. Patrick's Catering is there for your next event and by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. Braves and the Mets even at a game apiece and tied 3-3 in game three. Moving into the bottom of the seventh inning. What a fun weekend of baseball here, the Rays and the Mets. The day off tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, the Atlanta Braves are in. And the Rays take a long road trip after that. We'll be with you on Sun Sports Tuesday at 6.30. Raspo Ramirez will be on the hill against Williams Perez. Ramirez 8 3 in his last 15 starts with a 279 earn run average. He has been a fun story to follow and always a smile from Erasmo Ramirez. In the Rays half of the seventh, Richie Schaefer is going to lead it off. Schaefer's two for two today. Off Bartolo Colon. Single to right in the third when he went 3 2 in the count. Broke his bat and hit the first pitch into left in the fifth inning for a base hit. And he leads off the bottom of the seventh. And takes the slider this time for a strike. Kluber lost his no hit bid. Joe Maurer with two outs in the seventh broke up that no hit bid. One and one now. Oh, he got some uh, movement on that slider that missed. And then he picks up the corner with this one. One and two. Well, it's been three straight breaking balls. You don't see that very often, but you're also facing a guy who's been aggressive against the fastball and is two for two. So give him a little bit different look, especially third time up. And stays out there with another slider. Two and two. Flaherty the lefty and Parnell the right hander. In the New York bullpen. There's a drive hit deep to left. Conforto's got to go back. It out to give the Rays the lead. You know what? I, I, I wish I could have jumped in there. I was going to say, they were going fastball in. And I was going to say, and thinking to myself, this pitch is going to get destroyed. Richie Schaefer, on all four of those sliders, was leaking up the third base line. The hip was leaking. And there it leaks again, except this fastball's middle of the plate. That's going to allow him. You, you go back and you think about the pitch to John Jaso. Didn't like the pitch selection there and didn't like the location here because he had been telling you I am looking middle in on all four pitches and you went in there and he crushed it. A Geyer looks a high pop fly ball into right. And that ball caught. Ligaris on the catch out there. Well the Rays have taken the lead. On the Schaefer home run. His first hit in the big leagues was a home run in Chicago. And now after two hits today, he hits a home run and he is three for three. The cut and a foul ball back by Rene Rivera. Strike 0 2. Rivera fouls that one back, a slider. Kiermaier doing a little celebrating for Schaefer there in the dugout, and why not? 
smiles all around. One ball, two strikes. After falling behind, the Rays now have taken a four to three lead, overcoming a three run deficit. On the ground is short. Flores with a pickup and the throw. Well, Dwayne, this is what we're talking about with Richie Schaefer. Watch the front hip on all of these pitches. Start with the first one, the slider. There he goes. Boy, he's leaking. Okay, strike. Same thing. Get ready for that ball. Get another one. There he goes. I mean, it's one after the other. And now all of a sudden they call fastball in, and you're like, oh, this, this is not going to end up well. Never got off of it. And right there it was. Ended up middle, and that ball got crushed. Jaso singles in the right. Well, Jaso on the first pitch singles in the right field. That's back to what Jaso was talking about last night. No sense in giving the pitcher that first pitch strike. This time on the fastball, he singles in the right. And, and I've given up hope. I've given up hope that that hair is ever going to go anywhere. He just has been too hot, too consistent. You got to keep it, and we're forced to deal with it. So he's aboard for better or worse. <laughs> and that's it for Cologne. Terry Collins out to make the pitching change. All season long, Tires Plus donates $100 to the Pediatric Cancer Foundation for every Tampa Bay Rays home run televised on Sun Sports. Home run number two for Schaefer. Eric O'Flaherty is going to be the new pitcher. Cologne gone after six and two thirds. Kevin Kiermeyer is going to run at first base for Jaso. Well, he, he had too much energy on the bench. He needed to get him involved somehow. And the pinch hitter with Sizemore due, the pinch hitter will be Butler. So Joey Butler up there against the lefty. Chopper, third base side, grabbed by Uribe, throw to first in time. And that retires the Rays in the seventh. But they get the go-ahead run on this swing of the bat. And the long one from Richie Schaefer. 4-3 Tampa Bay.
Rays have taken a four to three lead after the Mets scored three in the second inning. They got a run in the third, two in the fifth to tie and grab the lead. But Richie Schaefer's home run, Chris Archer striking out 10 through the first six innings. Right now, Sedano is the pitcher of record. And Steve Geltz will take over on the mound. The Rays have also reset the outfield. You know, in assessment is will open the eighth inning. Geltz on for the 55th time. And the first pitch is lined into center for a base hit. First pitch fastball. Cespedes is aboard. Well, the Mets running out of time, running out of opportunities. This may be the last time the middle of the order gets a chance here, and they didn't waste any time. One pitch, one hit. Geltz has appeared in all three of these games against the Mets. There's Joey Butler in left with Kevin Kiermeyer taking over in center. Brandon Geyer moving from center to right. And Lucas Duda up here. Strike to do to Geltz actually in pitching in all three of these games. Rays had the day off before beginning this homestand. He pitched in the last game of the Chicago series. So this is four out of five days for him. And that, that's a heavy workload. Four out of five days, no, no doubt about it. Swing and a miss. 0 oh, 2. If you're Steve Gales, you're loving the opportunities. And if you are a little fatigued, you're like, listen, I give it all I got for one inning today. Sleep in tomorrow. Rays have Colome up in the bullpen. Duda's out on strikes for the third time today. Well, elevate that heater. That's such an effective pitch for this Rays pitching staff and Steve Geltz, and very effective against Duda. He wants that ball down and out over the plate, but tough to lay off the one that you see so well. well Jim Hickey's out there on the hill. Here's what's coming up on Rays Live, the pregame show presented by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. That'll be Tuesday night. We'll hear from Erasmo Ramirez, and Atlanta will be in with a couple new additions. Nick Swisher, now a Brave, and Michael Bourne back with Atlanta. Juan Uribe. All popping away from Rivera on the slider, ball one. Geltz in the game last night was on in the seventh and faced Cespedes, Duda, and Uribe, and he's got all three of those coming up here. Cespedes has singled. He struck out Duda, and it's 1-0 and now to Uribe. Bay opened the scoring for the Mets when he opened the second inning with a walk. There's a strike. And the bullpen ball loose from the New York bullpen. A nice kick save there by Rivera. 
does it all. You have the idea that he could be a pretty good goalie. Yeah. Hey, listen. <laughs> the technique that he uses on balls in the dirt, the way that he smothers them, keeps them close. No get, rebound shots. He gets goalie practice every time Nathan Carnes pitches yes. with that great depth on the curveball. You're right about that. And, and you know, and that's the thing. You know that going in. I mean, a lot of wild pitches by Carnes, and so you anticipate those breaking balls in the dirt, change-ups in the dirt, and he continually puts himself in, in good position to make plays. One and two the count on your rebate. One on, one out. Pop up. Gelch directing traffic. That's Rivera. Foul ball, and he's got it. Gelch zeroed in on that one immediately, pointing to where it was. And Rene Rivera, still in foul territory, handle it. I like right before that pitch too. They're going to go another breaking ball. Now the one home run that Uribe has in this series was on a hanging breaking ball, and so with two strikes, Rivera called it. It was agreed upon by Geltz, and then Rivera starts pointing to his helmet, like "Be smart, be smart with this pitch," and he induces the pop up. Doing the same thing right there on the fastball away to Conforto. Michael Conforto 0 for three in this game. One ball, no strikes. Two ball, no strike count, a miss. With the fastball. And that prompts Rivera and Geltz to talk it over. Archer for six, Sedeno for one, and now it's Geltz. So Popper going to be out of play. Two and one. Goes pitches foul back. Suspect is on the move. A two two count. Goes again, and this one is popped up. Playable for Longoria in the coaching box. Mets are out of the eighth. They leave one. We go to the home half of the inning. 4 3 Rays.
we raise up for health the Rays proud to support Major League Baseball's play ball initiative encouraging youth to be active and get out to play baseball or softball. You don't need 18 players grass or umpires to enjoy the game. For more information visit playball.org. Bobby Parnell the new pitcher for New York to face Evan Longoria. Evan swings and lifts one deep into right. Lugaris will go back to the track and make the catch with a couple steps left. Almost. We've seen Evan Longoria flash in that power stroke here recently over the last couple of weeks. And when he does, he'll get that good power carry to right, right center. Not out of the realm of possibility him going out that way, but a few feet short there. It would be nice to have a another run here, a little cushion. Sure would. Rays lead four to three. Jake McGee's up in the bullpen right now. James Loney faces the right-hander Parnell. One ball, no strike count Parnell. Worked in the Friday game, gave up a walk, and then got it out, and that was it in that appearance. And it's one and one here on Loney. Loney three fly balls today, 0 for three. One. Well, it's two strikes. Well, you can see when you look at this Mets ball club and the pitching that they have, and the Rays have dealt with a couple of their young hard throwers, Cologne, but. You know, when, when they project next year, Matt Harvey, DeGrom, we've seen, Syndergaard, we've seen, Steven Mance, and Zach Wheeler. How about those guys? It's a line drive, and it's right at Murphy, positioned in shallow right. And nobody's going to be uh, more than 27 years old in that projected rotation. Yeah, and, and really it comes down to health because certainly the talent, the power, the ability is going to be there and and if they all are are healthy and you know out there taking their turn every five days that's going to be scary good this is what they've done this year first quality starts and innings and a strike to Logan Forsythe you know just DeGrom's second year Syndergaard in his first year Matt Harvey coming back from injury. I mean, young and, and just going to continue to be sponge like as they soak in information. You know, they're going to have faced these hitters a number of times. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be a scary good rotation. Chuck swing foul ball one and two. Logan got a base hit in the sixth. Well, two balls, two strikes. The count is full. Again.
Ground ball headed toward the middle. That's going to go through into center, and Forsythe picks up his second hit. The Rays in double figures and hits. That's number 10. How about this? Oh, go ahead. I'm going to use the middle of the field. You, you, just jog the memory. Double digits and hit. Double digits and hits. What is that now? Nine of the last 12 games. Yeah, how about that? I'd like to go back and see how many times they did that previous. It seems as if it would have been nine the entire year. <laughs> right. It's been fun with uh, this team showing the ability to score four or five runs. Well, I, I just like it. It's been more fun to watch because these guys are just going up there and they're playing ball. You know, I mean, they're just up there. Let's go. Let's, you're going to pitch, and if it's over the plate, I'm going to swing. That's the way it was kind of set up. And they're having a lot of success right now. One strike to get. Well, you've made the point, too, about hitting big, you know, the reactive act in this whole thing. And, and that really is why that piece of advice by Yogi Berra makes so much sense. You can't think and hit at the same time because it's you're reacting. And if you're up there thinking and trying to figure things out while you're in the batter's box, it's too late. <laughs> I, without without question, I mean, I, you know, that, that's where you've got to be careful about how much information you take up to the plate as a hitter. There's a lot of information out there. Yep. You know, he throws this pitch, you know, such percentage in this count, in this location. There's a lot you can overwhelm yourself with, and it becomes a whole paralysis by analysis. Cabrera tried to check, and he's out on strikes. The call made by Tom Woodring. So there's no appeal with the plate umpire making the call. And so we'll head into the ninth for three rays. Four three, going into the top of the ninth. Coming up on Rays Live, the post game immediately following the show. Todd Callis and Doug Wechter will be at the Fox Studios above the left field seats, and they'll talk about the post game. Obviously, with Kevin Cash's comments that I will be getting in the clubhouse, but we'll also hear specifically about the home debut for the Golden Boy, Richie Schaefer. What an afternoon it has been for him. We'll also hear from John Jaso and assorted other members of the Rays clubhouse. That's Rays Live the post game brought to you by Checkers immediately following the game, guys. Well, the Rays will have Jake McGee on the hill here in the ninth inning with a 4-3 to three lead. Jake comes on for the 33rd time. Wilmer Floor is the first man he faces and the pitch is fouled. Strike one. Well, they've only been eight opportunities for Jake McGee so far this year as far as saves go. He's five out of eight. 
but familiar territory from what he did last year. And you know, cherishing and relishing this one. Pop fly, short center. Kiermeyer will be there. That's one away. By the way, all you have to do is ask our esteemed statistician, Rick Odioso. Ten plus hits in a game. Nine of the last 12, 75 percent of the time. Right? There you go. In the previous 100, 25 times, 25 percent. Mr. Odioso on it. <laughs> Juan Lagares. He pinch hit was called out on strikes in the seventh. And the late swing at the fastball in there in the mid 90s from Jake. A little close. Oh, and he says he's hit. And Woodring agrees. Boy, if he was, it wasn't by much. Wasn't by much at all. The fastball up and in. Let's take a closer look. Like I said, it wasn't by much. Well, Lagar is claiming that he was hit by that pitch. You can see the eyes of Rivera close. Woodring's eyes are close. So did it hit him? <laughs> I'm going to take a look at it. Well, his play. eyes were closed. I mean, look at the replay. <laughs> so they're going to take a look at it. At, at the very moment Woodring's eyes were closed yeah and, and, and this isn't the kind of league where you know you get to call your own fouls you get to get to call if you were hit yeah yeah I got me yeah they're not gonna yeah they're gonna give it to him I was gonna say there's no shoe polish on the elbow You know, that was the Cleon Jones. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Don't make me make the movie reference again. <laughs> there might be pine tar in some parts of the body, but that's something else again. So it's going to be a hit batter. It's Kevin Plowicki. The pitch is a strike. Oh, two. Runner at first, one out. Ninety seven, a little wide there. McGee on for an inning last night, worked an inning in Friday's game. He strikes out Plowicki. Fastball at 95. Hey, I mean, what else can you say about Jake McGee? You know you're getting it. Here it comes. And that one he didn't even bother locating. He just overpowered Plowicki. 13 strikeouts for Ray's pitching. 
And here's Curtis Granderson. And a foul ball. Strike one. Boy, that got Rene Rivera right in the front of that mask, and he was quick to tell Woodring he was fine. Ball, one strike. There's the breakout for Granderson and McGee in the matchup. Quick on that one. Now that one he did locate, and he located it very, very well. One more. The one, two. Foul away. Well, McGee. Like Geltz, he's pitched in four of the last five days. All three of these in the last game in the Chicago series with a day off between series. Into the dirt. And it's blocked. Boy, that curveball and Rivera active on that one. Boy, oh boy, you're right. He not only blocked it, and then he, all of a sudden he swoops out. He's thinking about making a play here. His ball well in front of the plate and wide. And now he's peeking down like, you know what? You, to another step, and I'm going to fire this thing. That's how you want your catcher. Guards at first, two outs, two two to Granderson. Three and two. Good fastball clocked at 97. So a full count. Runner in motion, fastball coming. There, there are absolutely zero surprises here. Let's just sit back and wait for the outcome. Three two again. Ground ball right side. Rays win it. Rays come back and win the series. Forsyth handles the ground ball from Granderson. And the Rays have taken two out of three from the New York Mets. Three one run games in this series. And the team that scored first in each game lost that game. Rays outscored the Mets 12 to 11, and they went two out of three, winning this one four to three. That's how close this thing was. And it was. It was hotly contested from Friday night on. And that, that's an amazing, you know, listen, it, usually you score first, you hang on, you win. Not this series. Everything close. And the Rays with a couple of back to back ball games have come from behind, come from three runs behind specifically. To win ball games by one. Outstanding effort by the fellas today. And with all of that, the Rays get back to 500 at 56 up and 56 down. For the Rays, four runs, 10 hits, no errors, five left. For New York, three runs, six hits, no errors, seven left. Xavier Cedeno wins his second game of the year. He's two and one. A save for Jake McGee. That's number six for McGee. The loss to Martolo Cologne, he's now 10 and 11, took two hours and 38 minutes to play it before 26,681. The Rays win it, four to three. The difference in this game, the home run by Richie Schaefer, 
And Todd Cowles is standing by with the Rays rookie right now. Quite a home debut for Richie. Sat out the first two games against Jacob DeGrom and Noah Syndergaard. Richie, it seemed like you've been very patient over your, your young career here four games in. Oh. That was pretty good. You saved your hat this time. You saved your hat this time. Shall we put it over on the. Uh, all right, we'll put it over on the edge of the dugout. So anyhow, Richie, I was saying you showed patience all the way through the Chicago series and your first couple times up. It seemed like that last at bat. You were really hitterish looking to drive something there against Cologne when you hit that home run. Yeah, you know, um, having a couple days off, you know, you want to you know, sort of you know, get your groove back a little bit. So first at bat, I was looking to see a couple pitches. And then after that, I was I was ready to go. What were you looking for there? It seemed like he was throwing you a lot of sliders there, and you got that fastball close to the inner half of the plate for yourself. Yeah, you know, he's got that good two-seamer that comes in. Um, I was looking for seven out over the plate, and, uh, yeah, I got it. Did you think you had it? It was a line drive. Did you think you had it uh, off the bat? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I thought I had a chance for sure, so I was just hoping to get up. So. We see it there, clear the fence, and uh, what a feeling it is to play here at home for the first time. Uh, the crowds all weekend long, all the games were close. Pretty energizing to, to play in front of this size crowd. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, the crowd was great. Um, the whole series, you know, they came out in bunches to support us. Uh, great team win today. I mean, it was it was awesome. Great, great series. What's your approach? I know you haven't dh a whole lot, playing mostly third and some first. What's your approach when you're the designated hitter in between at bats when you're you're not out there on the field? Yeah, it can be tough. I'm a little spacey sometimes, so I got to stay locked in all the time because uh, if not, I can get distracted and be looking all over the place. But I uh, try to go up in the cage and continue to swing, stay loose, because um, you're not out here in the field running around. So making sure my legs stay loose, you know, make sure my hands are all ready to go for when I get up. You took on a, a hot White Sox team in your first series in the major leagues, and now a team that was in first place in the NL East coming in. You win two out of three both times. Uh, you've got to be pretty impressed with what you've seen from this team in your first six games up here. I mean, it's incredible. The resiliency in this team is unbelievable. Anytime, anytime we get down, you know, we give ourselves an opportunity to get right back in it. Um, you know, Arch had one uncharacteristic inning, and then, you know, he locked it down and gave us an opportunity to get back in the game. Um, and then watching him work is just impressive. He's, he's the real deal. So uh, we played good defense, had timely hitting, executed when we needed to. It's the name of the game. Enjoy the off day tomorrow. Thanks, Richie. Thanks a lot. All right, guys, back to you. Richie Schaefer summed up a very fun weekend series here against the New York Mets. And the Rays come away with a victory here. It's a 4-3 to three final. We'll be with you on Tuesday when the Braves are in town. Our coverage begins at 6.30. For Brian Anderson and Todd Callis and the rest of our crew, Dwayne Stats, great to have you with us. Rays are winners, 4-3.